Welcome. This is the incredible, I the incredible honor of connecting with you uh, on the two year anniversary of these gratitude gatherings. Um, and as we have been talking about what this has meant over the last two years, I've been thinking a lot about what this whole idea of digital intimacy means and what Hug Nation has meant. You know, for many of us, uh, our introduction to Hug Nation began two years ago, but there's a little bit more to the story. And I think that the context of it, I think can uh, give some, maybe more weight to this and maybe some more thoughts about where we could be headed and what this could mean to each of us. Many, many, many years ago, uh, I started a webcam community called Citizen X. And this was before the days that it was easy to use a webcam. In fact, the webcams we used then, they were FTP JavaScript uploading. So there was a picture that would like refresh every 10 to 15 seconds. So it was really more like a slideshow, a live slideshow. And so Citizen X was a place that was not unlike Zoom, where if you joined, you would get a, uh, a room, like a Zoom room, and then anybody that would join you, you would see their thumbnails along the bottom. And it was a way that we could have this sense of space, a sense of like creating these tubes through the internet that we could actually connect to one another. And it was very experimental. Most people couldn't get the technology working. And at the time, most people were not online. This was in about uh, 2000 that we started doing this. And initially uh, we struggled to make money. So we connected with another company that was existed, which was called The Real House, which was a webcam uh, house, like, uh, like the real, like, uh, you know, the real world. So there's just cameras in every room. And so I moved into that house with a bunch of my Burning Man friends. I took it over, kicked out the people that lived there, moved in some Burning Man friends and started to figure out how could we use this, this combination of technologies, a webcam house and a webcam community to do cool stuff. And one of the, the first things we ever did was a thing called virtual grace. And so we had people all over the world that were alone physically on Thanksgiving come into a room where we had a shared chat room and people got on their webcam so we could see one another, just like these little FTP you know, images that would refresh every minute or so. And then a chat room. And we said, okay, as you see your name in the list of people there, that means that's your order around the table. And so as we, when it's your next, you'll will be your turn and you can share something that you're grateful for. And keep in mind, this was a time when if you said that you hung out on the internet, that was kind of like com confessing that you were a loser. If you said that you met your girlfriend online, people would go, uh, that was kind of like saying, oh, I have a mail order bride. You were saying like, I cannot make normal society work. And so I've retreated to this you know, place of misfits. Now, I and those of us there knew that that wasn't true. And this virtual grace was the first time that I really was like, holy moly, this is real. People were physically alone, but we felt, we knew that we were connected and people were crying and people were having these incredible experiences of, of not being alone. You know, that idea of physical isolation and being alone are not the same thing. So I was living in this webcam house and you know, slight trigger warning here, um, but... I was living in this webcam house when 9-11 happened. And at the time, you know, I was thinking all these cool things and look at me, look at all of us in the webcam house, all these things we were doing to try to get attention. And then this, this incredible tragic thing happened that just changed the perspective of the entire world. And what happened right after the horror and the shock was we started to hear the story in the news and from our politicians about the us them narrative and how we have to be protect ourselves. And it was really, you know, we now can historically see that it was preparing us for war, preparing us for invading, preparing us for, for being kind of accepting this idea of dehumanizing people on the other side of the world. But because we we're in this webcam community and webcam house and we were practicing the same things that we do here, we knew that that's, that narrative is no longer real, that there is this, this 
one click connection to people all over the world. And we have these tubes through webcams and otherwise where we can actually witness people into their living rooms and we can feel their hearts. And it was very real. We knew it. So we were like, well, how can we, how can we really start to show people? And so I started thinking of all these experiments, thinking of the virtual grace and then other things. And I started a site called the Digital Intimacy Institute and trying to figure out what different ways we could do it. And I'm just gonna fast forward through this, but I pulled off from the manifesto that was on the website. And it says like, in a time of grief in the world, but it's also a time of hope. We need to make sure that the love we feel towards our neighbors doesn't diminish as 9-11 fades into history. Let's maintain these feelings of connectedness. Let's make them grow. And think about how much this still applies. Wartime breeds fear, separation, and anger, but we do not have to let those bad parts of humanity take over. We can embrace the good parts that we saw from New Yorkers and our neighbors in the wake of tragedy. Let's work hard and not to forget what we are capable of when we let the gold inside us shine. The American flags and nationalism are awesome, but there is a bigger worldwide camaraderie that needs to be fostered. People all around the world would much rather hug you than hurt you. In these times, it is important to be reminded of that. The internet is begging us to use it to connect this global community of compassion. This is in 2001. And so the other thing I started doing is like, let's have a group hug once a week. So starting 2001, I would do Hug Nation starting in Citizen X. And we would, I would give a little connecting moment, share a story or two, and then we would have a group hug just like we still do. And it kind of got some attention as I was trying to explain to people the power of the internet, but the other thought uh, was how could, what other ways could we do it? So we started doing a thing, which was almost the exact same thing, but called global gasm, where we had people having sex at the same time or masturbating all around the world at the same time, trying to show that we can energetically connect and we can have this very real experience of one another around the world. Now, global gasm, as you can imagine, got way more attention. And so even though it, to me, it just, it, it was just different narratives of the exact same thing. The point was to try to show people that we can connect through the web. It's something that feels so obvious now, but it took something jarring like globalgasm and, and something sweet like Hugnation to help people to, to question the way that they thought the, the way that the internet was possible of. And it didn't really catch on until I asked my grandfather to, to co-host in 2004 after my grandmother passed. And so he said, yes. and so for the next several years, once a week, I would go to his house, his retirement village. We would talk for 15, 20 minutes and he would share his incredible energy. And then we would share a group hug together. And he started to get contacted by people all over the world that were, didn't have relationships with elders and would just ask for his advice and, and his, his, his experience. It was just really beautiful. And so then he passed on in 2007 and I was, wasn't sure if I should keep doing it because I felt like I was not a pure enough vessel, but people encouraged me to keep going. And so for the next many, many years, every week I would lead a hug. And every week we use all different sorts of technologies as different technologies came and went, Ustream, Stickham. Lately it's been on Facebook. It's always the archives have been going on YouTube for a number of years now. Um, each week, ending it with saying on behalf of Grandpa Caleb. And so not only has he been a part of every single week's energy, I also bought the, the Hugmobile, painted it pink, mixed his ashes into the paint job and was able to actually bring him with me as I visited Burning Man and Lucidity and went on a tour of the West Coast and visited people to share this energy and to reconnect. We had hugs live hugs after doing it online for years. We did live hugs uh, in Seattle, Portland, Sacramento on the steps of the Capitol, LA, San Diego. Um, and it was just, it was really incredible to, to, as people know here, you know, when you, you start to build these relationships and then you get to meet in person and just something magical happens. So that continued on and on and on and on and on. And then uh, in 2020, the pandemic hit 
And at the time that it really kicked in, I was in Costa Rica at a ayahuasca retreat and I was offline and then came back online uh, after being, you know, in this blissful transdimensional space and suddenly learned that the world was panicking and going crazy. And in the back in the US, people were hoarding toilet paper. And I was like in paradise. I was taking these icy baths in, in a mountain stream every day, multiple times a day, just like blissed out. And I was like, wait, do I really want to go back? Like, why would I return to this? And then I remembered that if this is, if this is happening, if people are going to be locked down in their homes, then we are going to be hungry for connection. And over the last 20 years, there probably wasn't anybody on the planet that had practiced connecting through webcams more than I had. And that maybe, even though I'm not a nurse or a doctor, that maybe I have an essential skills that could be used to help us get through this next chapter. Thinking that it was gonna be a few weeks, you know, that was the estimates where, you know, hunker down, flatten the curve, and then we'll get back to normal. And so I just declared we were going to do a gratitude circle twice a day. We're going to do a group hug and gratitude circle twice a day. And many of you found your way there very soon after that. At the time, my partner, Becca, was like, you said what? You committed to what? twice a day? Wait, what? What days are you going to take off? And luckily, very soon after that, uh, uh, Darcy and Kiri offered to take over one day a week so I could have a day off to be with my partner. And so we would gather, we timed it so that uh, we could share the banging of pans and listen to the people yelling in Europe as they were celebrating our essential workers. We would rebroadcast to, to Facebook initially and people would find their way in. Um, we also got listed on Kindling, which was Burning Man's way of kind of letting people know of things that were happening around the world um, that were ways to, that we could connect in the kind of 10 principles style. And so we were listed for a very long time, an ongoing basis. And I, you know, many of you may have found your way here through that. We tended to have a, a whether people found their way through me personally or through Kindling, many of the original people and many of us still found their way here through Burning Man. And so that became this, uh, you know, a shared camaraderie. And this became a lot like a theme camp in our, our, our bonds and our overlap. It also became, I think, a significant part of this radical inclusion aspect where what kind of person shows up at our gratitude circle? it'd be hard pressed to describe that person, whether by their income or their, their nationality or their hobbies or their politics. We tend to be on the liberal side. We tend to be mask wearers, but then again, we could have just scared everyone away who didn't believe that. Um, but pretty, you know, it's about radical inclusion. And we started to do different things that try to, to increase this feeling of connection. You know, we may have remembered we used to, pass around a cone from camera to camera to try to increase this sense of togetherness, even though we were physically on our own. And we did all sorts of, you know, we started to have themes and dress up days and uh, hat wearing was normal. It was kind of expected that you were, ex you were, ex anything you wanted to wear and radical self-expression was, was welcome here. Um, and we became like, an artistic expression in all our different facets. We did things like a squiggle game, which became a regular thing that we did, a way to, to artistically have a, a, a co-creation experience, even though, again, we were physically apart. And a lot of laughter in that. We had pizza parties. And there's, but I think, one of the really incredible things about our story is the individual stories, the stories that interconnect and the special things like, and again, I apologize that this is not chronological and it's not based in importance. If you're not mentioned in this next list, does not mean that your story is not 
every bit is as magical and important. But when I describe this group and why it's more than people understand, I can't help but mention Brady and Carrie, who you know, met each other on day two, at least saw each other in person on camera on day two. And then I don't know exactly how much they started flirting online, but next thing I knew they had gone, met each other by driving halfway across the country and started a, a date that uh, some would argue has yet to end. Um, and I, it, <sighs> It's, it's, that was, I think, one of the first times when I was like, this is way more than a way that we're passing time through the pandemic. This is a way that we are building our lives together. And who can forget Paul Paul and Bob and his love of cats and his love of Bonnie. And as we gathered together in our webcams in the room next to us, Bonnie was going through hospice. And as we were practicing gratitude, it was so inspiring to witness Tal Paul's celebration of life and his love and finding things to be grateful for with the, the help of the hospice workers and these final precious moments. It was a treasure to witness a lifelong love story and to be welcomed into the final chapter. And then there's Sean and Buster. Sean and Buster, who really took this to the next level by connecting so many of us physically throwing caution to the wind saying, screw you CDC, I'm gonna meet people in person and spread my germs around the world. But in doing so connecting, you know, person after person after person and became this literal, um, literal physical connection between so many people. And this is just, you know, a fraction of the pictures. There's so many. Um, and then more and more people started being inspired by Sean and, and connecting and having meetups throughout California and in Florida and, and then in Europe. And this incredible, powerful meetup in Montserrat. And, and then Javi and Ariana meeting in south, south of Spain and, and this like, Wait, is that real? Is Javi a real person? He he works with horses and and he he's got that laugh. Is he real? Because that's incredible. So many of these caricatures, these people who are just so incredible with their big hearts, and then to see people sharing a, a camera, you know, a, a webcam together, and seeing that they are they are quite real. And uh, these stories are not two dimensional on the other side of webcams, but they are they are pieces of this grand narrative of this family. And the relationships not only happened in Zoom rooms, you know, all day long, but people started to connect through other tools, through uh, different social media and Facebook and Telegram. And then the thing that brought us all together or many of us together, Burning Man became something that was something we expressed in all sorts of ways through this group. We had these dance parties and dress up days. We had uh, people joining us from all around the world, finding any opportunity we can to, to radically self-express and participate. Um, and then those expressions got even more experimental. And we had the pink porch camps that were in San Diego and in Florida. Claudia created her own camp and then also created a camp for us in virtual reality, learning how to create in VRC VR um, and really just stretching all of these experimental ways of digital intimacy uh, into ways that we're still, we're still practicing and still figuring out. And it's, it's, it continues to inspire one another. 
And then this last Burning Man, we tried to tie all these things together and had a physical gathering at the Renegade Burn, as well as a VR gathering, as well as a Zoom gathering, all weaving together and, and shredding all of the, the definitions of what, what a gathering is. Letting it you know, it does not matter where your feet are. It matters where your heart is. And we really, I think, have been on the forefront of experimenting and trying to test and share um, what can be. And while this kind of could seem silly on the outside, it's not just silly. We had an ex early on when we were gathering uh, was when the world in America, especially, caught on fire. And we struggled with our identity as uh, George Floyd's death was really being uh, igniting us in rage. And we had an interesting experience here. I think of people wondering, how dare you celebrate gratitude while there is so much suffering, while there's so much pain and so much injustice. And so we stopped broadcasting things onto Facebook. And we also started a book club. And we started discussing ways that we could be more connected and more open. We discussed, uh, and since we still do, we've still been doing our book club and, and how do we grow as humans? How do we push each other to, to not be stagnant and stretch our hearts, our minds? And, and I think it was a really valuable thing in, in, a, in a time when everything was so volatile to have a safe community of, of exploring ideas that we still, we still are exploring. And even more recently, and maybe most profoundly, this, this expression of coming to one's aid, uh, as we learned that one of our regulars, Anna, was, uh, had to flee her home in, in, a, in, a, in a decision and a level of uncertainty and fear and, and that is, I think, impossible for anyone else to really get our heads around. But what is possible is to imagine what could I do? And I'll admit that while I was in a state of like, wow, this is so horrific, other people in our group said, what can I do? And drove and found ways to do whatever possible. And that, is, that has become, a story that I will treasure and be proud of uh, for the rest of my life, as I have been inspired, not just by Anna and her family's courage, um, but by Maddie and Richard and Alex and Azuro, who showed us the best of humanity. And I know that this story is not all sunbeams and rainbows, and and I can't put myself in in the shoes of, of being there, but I'm so grateful that we've been let into this story and, and able to do what is what we can and to be inspired. Because I think that what that, that leads us to is what is the future of this? Who knows, you know? I think that each one of us is a different person now. Each one of us, started this alone and quickly knew that that wasn't true, that we were not alone. And whether it was our creative expression or our identity as you know, not burner enough or not creative enough or not this or not that, as we started to be there for one another and, and, and start to realize this incredible activism of, of radical support that we had the ability to change one another and change the world. And as we stepped into these identities as ambassadors, as love ambassadors, that's when we start to see these opportunities to be of service, to change the way we see the world, not as a dark place that we need to find these protective places of safety in the Zoom room where we, we, we hide, on the contrary, the Zoom room is where we, we lift each other up, where we find strength so that we can go into the world and show up and shine our light in the places where it's, it's, it's maybe a little too dark. 
So as we looked forward and into potential Burning Man camps that are being created and these bonds turning into things far more than, than, uh, than an online meeting into real life family, to real life support, and not just for one another, but connecting into the world. These ripples that we have formed and these ripples we've created have changed each one of us. And whether we like it or not, as we go into the world, we carry those ripples with us and we change the world with every step and every word, every hug, every smile. So I am so proud of what we have been so far. I am so proud of what we are now. I am so, did that work? I am so inspired by one another and also inspired by the, 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 this grand lesson that when you, I don't know where we're going, but I know how to get there. This idea of the grand lion tracker saying, I don't know how to, where we're going. I just know how to get there. And I, I know how we get to where we're going is by continuing to show up for each other, by practicing gratitude, for practicing radical support and trusting that when we step one step at a time in that direction, we heal the world. And so with that, I would love for you to join me for one more hug. And wherever you are, give yourself a squeeze. Send out that love to one another. Feel it coming back at you. Know that you are on a team. And when you are feeling weak, let us get your back. And when you are feeling strong, lift us up. And over time, know that we got you, you got us. That that is what family is. No expectations, just showing up, letting us see you. Letting yourself be seen, sharing the most precious gift that we have to give to another human being, which is our truth. And that includes our tears, includes our laughter, includes our, our shame. And in that space of radical openness and radical support, radical expression, we can surrender and trust and know that love will lead the way. So let's take a deep breath in and squeeze. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb and each one of you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of this incredible digital intimacy experiment and celebration. I love you.